Hey everybody, this is Kevin Ian here for you for an Avatar Last Ebon episode review. This is going to be Book 1 Water, Episode 13, titled The Blue Spirit. So let's get into it. Got that down pat. So the episode starts off with a bird flying over to this Fire Nation temple. I'm going to just call it a temple. This Fire Nation temple. And then we see some archers practicing the archery and they're hitting every bullseye. The camera pans up and we see Commander Zhao and this other dude talking. Commander Zhao wants these archers because they are really nice. He also, like, they're super nice. He mentions that these archers are so nice that they're able to hit a fly 100 yards away from them and keep it alive. So that's, that's pretty nice if I do say so myself. The dude that he's talking to is saying, no, now that the Avatar is on the loose and wherever they are, they need to stay exactly where they're at. Because, you know, Commander Zhao wants them to help him capture the Avatar. And apparently these archers are, like, the best in the Fire Nation. And they want them, well, they're the best in the Fire Nation, but they can't use fire bending. Because, like, throughout this whole episode when they're shooting the arrows and stuff, they never light it on fire. Now, I mean, obviously, I mean, you light a, if you light an arrow on fire, it could just, like, you know, disintegrate. But you know what I mean? Like, they never, like, light the tip on the fire or anything. So I guess they can't use fire bending, but then the Fire Nation. I mean, you don't have to use fire bending to, use it to be in the Fire Nation, but you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, um, he's saying he's saying no. He, well, Commander Zhao, like you know, you're wasting that talent for them to be your security guards. They should be doing more by going out to capture the Avatar. The dude is like, no, that's final. That's my final answer. You're not taking my men. But then a bird comes in, lands on his arm, and he takes out the little note on the bird, and it's a message from the Fire Lord. And the Fire Lord has promoted Commander Zhao from Commander to Admiral. So now he says, now I'm not requesting anymore. I'm an Admiral now. Now I'm telling you. You're giving me those fire. I mean, you're giving me those archers. He's like, okay, yes, you can. I mean, like, you know, he's an admiral now, so he can't really say anything. Then the camera pans up on the roof, and we see some dude or girl. We see somebody in a blue mask, the blue spirit, and he goes back into the garden. Well, the blue spirit goes into the darkness, and then we cut the Aang, Sokka, and Katar, Momo, and Appa. <laughs> I'm saying all those names back and forth. Anyway, Sokka is super sick because last episode, literally like last episode, he was caught up in that storm for a little while before Aang and Katara was able to save him. So all that wind, all that cold wind and water and everything made him pretty sick and Katara's taking care of him. Aang comes back and he's like, yeah, I wasn't able to like find any um, doctors or anything, but I found his mat. And he was also looking for some ginger root, but he wasn't able to find that anyway. But he says, hey, I found his mat. And on his map, it says there's this doctor, not a doctor, but this medicine lady is on the top of this mountain. I'm going to just go there and get him some stuff. And Katara's like, yeah, it's good. That's, and then she starts to cough. He's like, oh, no, not you too, Katara. She's like, hey, it's just a little cough. I'm good. But Sokka was just a little cough yesterday. Now look at him. He thinks he's an earthbender. And he's trying to earthbend, but he can't. Like, he's so sick. He's on to hallucinate and think he's an earthbender. <laughs> he thinks he's an earthbender. And Katara keeps coughing some more, so she lays down an opera. He says, I'm going to just go ahead to the top of the mountain and see what I can get. He says, it should take about maybe a couple minutes with my air glider. He grabs his air glider. He goes out to the window, but then it starts to do a big thunderstorm. Like a giant like bolt of lightning hit the ground. He's like, okay, I'm going to just go on foot. So he puts down his glider, and he starts to run. And then... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you, you know, I use Netflix and it shows the squares in the front. The squares in the front were all black for a second. So I was like, ugh, what am I going to do? I thought the Wi-Fi went up for a second. I didn't know what I was going to do for a second. But anyway, Aang starts to run around. And we cut to Zuko on the ship. Zuko was trying to plan a course with the dude he was arguing with last episode to find the Avatar. But they lost his trail ever since the storm. But they said, keep heading northwest. And out of nowhere, this huge ship come out of nowhere. And they come on the Zuko ship. They say that now, Commander Zhao, as an admiral, you have to report anything you have seen or heard about the Avatar to him. Since he's trying to capture the Avatar. And he also made some flyers of Aang's face on him. Well, it's his whole body, basically. Zuko says he has nothing to say to Commander Zhao and to get out of here. Get off his ship. And he also says that nobody is allowed to go in or out of these waters right now. Zuko gets even more bad and tells his men, I mean, not his men, tells Commander Zhao's men to get off his ship. So they do. As soon as he does that, camera pans over to Uncle Iroh, and he's playing that chess game that he was playing, like, two to three episodes ago. Two to, it, was, it, was, it was episode nine, so, like, two to three episodes ago, three episodes ago. He's, he's playing it, and he wins. He's like, hey, I won the whole pot. <laughs> he grabs all the money he just won, and all the dudes, like, lost their money. They're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. He's like, hey, boys. You did pretty well that round. I'm pretty sure you get even better, but you know, play one more round. He was trying to zip all that money. <laughs> he was trying to zip all that money. <laughs> so ignorant. <laughs> so 
Anyway, we get these two scenes back to back. We see a scene with these two Fire Nation guards on their little post and they're looking out for the Avatar. One Fire Nation guard has the flyer that we just saw that had Aang's face on it. He says, hey, look at here, man. It says here that the Avatar is able to make tornadoes, air gusts. He can even run as fast as the wind. He says, you really believe that nonsense? I guess the Fire Lord trying to get us scared. And he looks through the telescope. And as soon as he says that, we literally see Aang run past them so fast because he can run with the wind, you know, because he's an airbender. It makes that little hut at the end just, boom, just blow away like the big metal wall. <laughs> just blew at it like, boom. And they're like, whoa. And then one of the dudes grab a horn and blows it. So, like, they give an alert that the Avatar is in this area. And then we cut to Momo, Sokka, and Katara. Sokka it has a park start, so he's asking Katara to get him some water. Obviously, so, I mean, obviously, Katara is as sick as he is, so she can't really move. So, she tells Momo, take this, go down to the river, and get us some water. Please, Momo. And she's trying to explain it as well as he can. And then we get a POV shot of Momo of how he sees things. He sees things just like we see things, but it's like a little green tint because his eyes are green, and he can't fully understand Katara because she's human and he's an animal. So she's like, what, 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 what? Like, she's like, she's like, go get some water, please, water. What, 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 get, get. And Momo's just looking at her. Okay, and he grabs it and flies away. <laughs> so he doesn't, he didn't really understand any of that, but he flew away anyway with the satchel to get some water. So I guess let's see what happens. <laughs> I guess we'll see. What happens? We cut the Aang and he's finally able to get on top of the mountain and there's this old lady there with her little cat. She said that there used to be a ton of other people there that makes medicines and different herb herbals and stuff there with her, but they all left because they got old. She's old too, but she said she decided to stay here with her little cat. And she also makes, I mean, this isn't really important to the story, but she also mentions that um, Earthbender soldiers come up to her place every once in a while and they always leave better than when they came in because he's so good at making medicine and herbals and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, okay, well, uh, you know, I, I got some friends that are really sick and they need your help. She's like, hey, calm down, don't calm down. And she's looking for like one last ingredient because she has this bowl and she was putting stuff in it. And she said, okay, I need this one last ingredient. Where is it? And she starts to walk around to all the plants that she's in. It's basically a greenhouse that she's in right now. It's not, it's not like an actual greenhouse, but it's like so many plants and um, around, I was going to say something else. I was like, what else is in a greenhouse besides plants? Um, there's like so many plants and stuff around them. Like, it's basically a greenhouse. So she's walking around trying to figure out what's the last ingredient that she needs. And Aang's like obviously a bit impatient because his friends are... I mean, they're not dying, but they're, like, super sick, and they need to get better. So he just has to wait while she's walking around looking for the whatever plants he needs. And I got ahead of myself, so let me cut. Okay. We actually get a pretty nice moment with Uncle Ira and Zuko. Uncle Ira walks onto the deck of the ship, and we see Zuko um, training. And he's training hard. Like, we see him go, boom, boom. He jumps up in the air, does a kick. He's, like, he's like going hard with his training. It's just fire going everywhere. He goes, Prince Zuko. It's been almost an hour and you haven't given your men an order. He says, I don't care what they do. Come on, what's the matter? He says, Uncle, what am I going to do? You know, Commander Zhao, well, Amu Zhao now has so many resources in his hands and we just have this one ship and this one crew. You're going to find an avatar in no time. My honor, my hopes, my dreams, my family, my country, they're all going to be swept away in an instant. You know, he just, he's been looking for the avatar for two years and he's so close. Now this other dude was finna catch him like that. All his hopes and dreams are being crushed. And we actually like see Zuko's face and he's actually, he's not crying, but his, like, his, like, you know, his face, like he's looking sad. He's looking pretty sad out into the ocean. Like he knows like any moment now, Commander Zhao will be able to just swoop up the Avatar because he has so many resources in his hand now since he's the Admiral. Even before he was an Admiral, he had a ton of resources in his hand. And Zuko is just him his uncle, and his crew, and this one ship. That's literally all they have. They don't have any other resources because he got banished. You know, so he, he doesn't have anything else. So he feels pretty sad. Anyway, <clears throat> we cut back to Aang, and he's talking to the old lady, and the old lady finds the last ingredient and puts it into a bowl and stirs it up. Aang grabs the bowl. He's like, oh, thank you, and he starts to run, but then the old lady hits him with a spoon. He's like, hey, what's the problem? This isn't a cure for my friends? She's like, no, it's not. This is the cat's food. She loves this. Now for your friends, she said, "Go to the bottom of the. I mean, go to the bottom of this mountain, and go to the lake. There's these frozen frogs in there." And all the angels like, "What am I supposed to do with frozen frogs? You suck on them. Suck on them." She's like, "Yes. When you suck on them, the frogs give off the frog skins give off this ointment that will cure your friends instantly. But you have to hurry up because you know when you have them, you take them out the lake, they're gonna unthaw. So you need to hurry up and let them suck on them. Then they'll be cured." And he's like. 
I mean, okay, I mean, you know, sucking on frogs is pretty nasty, but hey, the doctor says, the doctor says. So he goes outside, and out of nowhere, a bow and arrow, boom. Not a bow, not the whole bow and arrow, but a, arrow, but a bow, boom, lands on his feet. He's like, whoa, hey. Then like two more land. He's like, hey, what the, <laughs> whoa. Uh, hey, I think you guys dropped this. Like, he literally picks it up off the ground. He's like, hey, you dropped this. And like a huge flurry of bow and arrows start to fly. He's like, whoa. He makes an air dome, and he sucks him away. But one bow and arrow, like, he is stuck, it's stuck inside of his suit, but it doesn't yell. So I guess it's like stuck right beside his foot, but he still has to yank it out so he'll be able to run. And it's all those arches that um, Commander Zhao got from the beginning of the episode. So the bow and arrow dude is on the chase. They have an actual name. I kind of forget the name. I'm not even going to front. Like, the whole group had an actual name. I ain't going to front. I actually forgot the name. <laughs> I really forget the name. <laughs> but anyway, um, they're chasing Aang down the mountain. Aang, like, Aang jumps off the mountain, and they're chasing Aang. Like, they literally jump off with him. Obviously, Aang has air bending, so he can, like, cushion his fall. Everybody else shoots a rope bow and arrow and grabs it and, like, swings off of it like Tarzan. That's what they do. Aang goes into the lake. He grabs a few frozen frogs, puts them in his shirt, but then they start to shoot the frogs out of his hand. He's like, no, no. Oh, come on. Then they start to shoot some more bow and arrows, and, like, you know, Aang, his, like, sleeve is like this. So they shoot a bow and arrow in here, and it, boom, goes against a rock. Aang's like, what the heck? And they do it, like, a few times up here and a few times down here. Then Aang he takes his other hand, hits the water, and makes an ice wall. But then they shoot a bow and arrow, like, four or five times, and each arrow hits the ice, and then eventually breaks it. And then they shoot his other hand, just like the, just like I said with this hand. They go, you know, they shoot, like, a few arrows on this, like, part of the sleeve, and they get stuck on the rock. And then they shoot a net, and he's captured. In the very next scene, he's literally inside the Fire Nation Temple from the beginning of the episode beside these two pillars, and he's chained up like this, and his feet are chained up, and he's looking up, and it's Commander Zhao. He's like, he didn't get captured. Like, jeez, man. <laughs> he really got captured. Uh, this was the pretty cool scene where he makes, like, the ice wall, and each arrow kept hitting it over and over again. Like, each arrow was hitting the arrow that were before. Like, you ever seen the movie Brave when she shot a bullseye? And then she took another arrow, and she shot it, and the arrow went through that arrow to hit a bullseye. That's literally what happened. Like, they keep bullseyeing the arrows, and it broke the ice, which was pretty cool. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Here's the cool scene I was talking about, where each arrow hit exactly where that arrow was, and then it broke the ice. Like, they, these, these guys are nice. <laughs> these guys are nice. They're so nice that I can't remember their name. I can't remember the group's name. I forget the group's name, my bad. back up there Whew. all right <laughs> all right let me uh cut to where i was because i got ahead of myself again i can't really i remember it so much so while they're in this room commander zhao um is like wow the great avatar <laughs> chained up he's just a child i don't know how you alluded to finances for 100 years but we get you now and he also mentions that this, i mean he, he's pretty smart when he says this he says that he's not going to kill Aang. Why well, doesn't he just kill Aang? Like, come on, I man, this is a plot hole. No, 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 he's actually smart. He'll like, we just kill you, you're going to get reincarnated. Whenever you get reincarnated, you're just going to be a problem for the fight nation again. So, we're just going to keep you here. But barely alive. Like, you know, he's like, he like, he like, he's still a kid, so, so he can't just full on say, we're going to torture you. But he like, you know, implies like, yeah, we're going to torture you and beat you senseless. But we're still going to keep you just barely alive so you don't die. Because he just knows he's going to get reincarnated again. And he's like, come on, man. Unchain me we'll fight, and I'll fight you right now. Uh, no. And then he also says, man, how does it feel to be the last airbender alive? You must miss all your friends and family, huh? Aang looks all mad, but then he goes, he's like, yep, I thought so. Oh, I guess I see you around. And don't forget, there ain't nobody going to rescue you. And he starts to walk away from Aang. Aang sucks up a bunch of air and goes, whew. And then when he does that, the air, like, birth hits him in the back. He flies. <laughs> Commander Zell flings across the room and hits the wall. He gets really mad. But he's like, whatever. You're stuck in here. Ain't nobody saving you. And then he walks out. <laughs> I thought he was going to, like, do something. But nah, he was like, man, whatever. <laughs> it's like, he just walks out right after that. So, okay. We cut to uh, Momo. Sokka and Katar and Momo just keeps bringing Katar the wrong stuff like he brought Katar see he just brought Katar a dead mouse obviously Katar is like Ugh. like no we need water oh water come on go get some water and he picks up the satchel flies away 
and then we cut to the blue spirit and the blue spirit is pretty nice so we see this cart going over to the finest and Kim temple the cart gets over to it well it gets close to the gate and we see the blue spirit grab onto the bottom of the cart like you see in movies and it gets to the gate a fine Asian guard walks over to the back of the cart looks inside of it he goes okay clear then he walks to the side of the cart then he looks down and the blue spirit is completely gone he's like okay clear and then the camera pans out and the blue spirit was able to go from the bottom of the cart stand up go inside of the cart like he's inside of the cart right now right before the fine Asian guard was able to see that was smooth like, come on you can't tell me that wasn't smooth man the blue spirit is smooth and then we see Commander Zhao giving out a speech about how they finally captured the Avatar. Souls and Karma is coming around, so it'll be unlimited power for all Fire Nation people. And how they're going to take over the world. They're going to finally be able to take out Boss and Yusei and burn that city to the ground. He's like hyping up everybody because they just captured the Avatar. And then we see the Blue Spirit just go past all the security. He literally goes inside the sewer, walks around, comes out of the sewer, Runs past some guards while Commander Zhao is giving his speech. What's well, Admiral Zhao? But I'm gonna just keep saying Commander. While he's giving his speech, the Blue Spirit goes onto the wall, looks, goes to the side. Like he's like bypassing all the security. Like the Blue Spirit is nice. <laughs> the, the Blue Spirit is like that. And then we cut to Aang and all the frogs on the on Thaw, and so the frogs are like running away. And one frog goes under the door, and all the finance guards is in front of Aang's door. Like what the heck? And then, this is a cool scene. So we hear a bunch of noise in the, in the distance. And then we see a Fire Nation helmet roll up to the door. And all the guards there are like, what the? So one guard goes down the hallway, takes a right. And you see a big burst of fire. And you hear grunting. And nothing happened. So then two guards go. No, I mean, sorry. It wasn't two. It was three guards. They all walk down the hallway and take a right. While there's only one guard left. And then the blue spirit is on top of the ceiling with some chains. He jumps down, ties them up, beats them down. And then he's able to take out the financing guard that was left. It's pretty smooth too. Because the financing guard sees the blue spirit in the distance running up on him. So he grabs a horn to like alert everybody. But the blue spirit throws a tiny little knife. It cuts it. And then he drops it. like, what the heck? And then he takes him out. The, the, the blue spirit is nice, man. Like, the blue spirit is nice. You want him on your team. You want the blue spirit on your team. This is the cool scene where the helmet... Just comes like the frog comes from under the door, and then the helmet comes from out of nowhere. You see that? <laughs> like imagine you're on post, just chilling. You see like another guard's helmet just roll up to you. I'm like, I already know whoever's down this hallway is like that. So I'm like, hey man, you got you, you need the keys? I got them right here, man. <laughs> I ain't messing with someone like that. If someone does something like that, I am not messing with them. I am not messing with them, I am not messing with them at all. <laughs> I do not get paid enough for that. <laughs> I do not get paid enough. And oh, I forgot about that suit. Um, he all the fire nation guard does try to throw a fire a burst at the blue spirit, but the blue spirit has a bucket of water and boom, instantly. Smart. Anyway, <laughs> the blue spirit was able to get inside of obviously because he just took all the guards. Gets inside of Aang's um room. Runs up to him, slices his chains on his hands and his legs. He's like, whoa, hey, are you here to save me? And the blue spirit's like, come on. He's like, okay, come on. all right, man, all right, let's go. So Aang starts to follow him, which was really, the only thing confusing about this part is like, the dude, like, he takes out two katanas and runs up to Aang, right? And Aang just like, oh, he starts to yell. And Aang doesn't even try to like, you know, suck up some air and blow it. Like probably like, since we just saw him take out all these guards, it's most likely like, yeah, we'll probably be able to, like, yeah, he'll probably be able to dodge that, but Aang didn't even try anything. Like, you know, if this wasn't somebody here to rescue Aang, Aang would have died. Like, Aang doesn't even try to do anything. Aang doesn't try anything, man. Like, what in the world? And then we get one little funny scene where Aang sees all the uh, frogs that were unthawed. He tries to pick them up, like, oh, no, come on. Go back to being frozen. The blue spirit comes over and grabs Aang by the neck. He's like, wait, no, wait. My friends need you. And then we cut to Katar and Sokka. And Katar, I mean, not Katar. Momo has brought Katar everything but water. We see a little accordion, jewels and goals, a little tiara on top of Katara's head. We see just a ton of different stuff that Momo has brought her but water. And Katara gets over. She's like, you know what? Forget it, Momo. Like, you just don't know what water is. And rolls over it. And then Sokka says, hey, what's the matter? Who's this Aang person you keep talking about, princess? Katara looks, he's like, oh, whatever. 
<laughs> like, who is this? The blue spirit and Aang are inside the sewers and they're walking around and they jump out the sewers and then they see the rope that the blue spirit left. So they're trying to climb up the rope. At the exact same time, Commander Zhao and some other random dude are walking down the hallway. And Commander Zhao says, hey, make sure to write down that uh, speech I just did and bring it to the Fire Lord. Also write down everything I'm finna say and my accolades of Captain the Avatar all by myself. And then as soon as he cuts the corner, he sees all those guards that all, that's all chained up with the rope. He's like, what the? Then he runs over to the door. I mean, he runs over to the room where Aang was chained up at. Aang is gone. So he gets mad and he sounds the alarm. And so then he does that. Everybody sees the blue spirit of Aang trying to escape. They cut the rope. So they're like, okay, we got to fight now. <laughs> like, all right, let's do this. Aang says, stay next to... So, so, so this whole fight scene, I remember. I, it's, it's crazy how I remember this. So this whole fight scene, so this is what happens. The blue spirit and Aang starts to run. And it take, and the blue spirit takes out both his katana. The blue, I mean, Aang's like, hey, stay next to me. Aang runs in front of the blue spirit. Does an air beam. The air beam suits everybody away. And Aang's starting to run through the gate. Because there's like four or five gates that are starting to close slowly. Aang starts to run through it. But then he turns around and he sees that the blue spirit is surrounded by a ton of guards. The blue spirit is handling himself pretty nicely. Like each guard is coming up one by one. He's taking them out easily. But he's still surrounded. So Aang jumps in the middle. Does a big air burst. He's like, come on. Let's go. And then Aang, let me just make so. I know I said I remember this, but this is pretty nice. Uh, I know I said I remember this whole scene, but I forget something. <laughs> Sorry. Right before Aang jumps into the middle of everything, Aang almost gets stabbed in the chest by some dude with a spear. So the dude does, does this. Aang backs up, grabs the spear, does a big air blast to make him shoot away. Aang breaks the tip of the spear with the, like, the pointy part on it. He grabs the blue spirit when he jumps into the middle and there's a big air burst. Grabs him around the leg, then he uses it as a propeller. He's doing this so fast. He uses it as a propeller, but eventually he's so heavy, they fall down. Then Aang shoots the blue spirit up with some air on top of the wall. Then Aang comes up with the two. Then they both start to fight off all the guards. And then the fire nation, it's pretty cool. They bring out these bamboo ladders. And they and the bamboo, so they're able to like stretch and bend up. If I'm not mistaken, bamboo can do that. It stretch and bend in real life. Stretch and bend all the way up. So the blue spirit goes over to like one fights all the guards and they all fall off. And goes over to one and does a big air burst <laughs> downwards and he does it hard. I mean, I'm not even kidding. He goes, boom, boom. And then we see a POV saw of somebody climbing up and he sees Ang like, what the? Boom. And he hits the ground hard. Ang was not taking it. He's so fine. Ang was not playing around. <laughs> I mean, Ang was not playing around. Anyway, after, after they take out all the guards in the bamboo ladders, Aang grabs him. He's like, hey, get on my back. So the blue spirit has two in his hand, and Aang is on top of one. And they start to use him like still. So they're on top of one. Aang grabs it, puts him in front of him. They step on the next one. Step in front of it. They step on the next one. Our financing guard likes it on fire, so they have to jump off. And they land back on the ground and in front of the gate. Commander Zao walks up. He's like, hey, keep the avatar alive, but kill whoever that um, dude is. And as soon as he hears that, the blue spirit takes both his blades and puts it at Aang's neck. And the, and the, and the commander's like, oh, oh, oh. Open the gate. Are you serious? What's going on? Open the gate. We can't let the avatar die. And the blue spirit walks backwards with both his blades on his neck and they walk through the gate and they're walking down this little trail and the forest is like maybe like 10 feet away from them and then commander and then uh, sorry, the forest is about 10 feet away from them while they're walking on this trail and commander's out standing next to one of the arcs and he said, hey, do you have a clear shot? Make sure you don't kill the avatar. Just the mugger. And then whenever we get the mugger, we'll take him to the Fire Lord with the Avatar. Okay, shoot. He shoots the arrow. It hits the blue spirit. He falls down. Everybody's starting to run towards Aang. Well, no, no. No, everybody, everybody doesn't. They're like, is he dead? And then Aang, he looks to the side and he sees that the blue spirit mask has got knocked off. So he makes a big air gust to make all the dust around him go up. And he's like, hey, go get the Avatar. We can't see what's going on. Hurry up. Get him. Get him. Get him. So all the guards are starting to run towards Aang and the blue spirit. Aang looks over and takes the mask fully off. And then we see it's Zuko. <laughs> the blue spirit was Zuko. Zuko is nice. So Aang, he freaks out and starts to run away. But then he turns around. He's like, oh. And then all the dust clears and Aang and Zuko are gone. Aang was nice and he grabbed Zuko and brought him out of there. Because Zuko just helped him escape from the fire nation place. So well, that's the least he can do, right? I mean, <laughs> that's literally the least he could do. And obviously Commander Zhao is furious. And then the frog, one of the frogs is able to jump over the bridge. Then we cut to the next morning because all of this happened at night. Uh, it was a pretty nice scene with Aang and Zuko. So we see a POV saw of Zuko finally waking up. And he looks up at Aang. Aang is sitting next to him. 
And uh, Zuko's listening to all this. So Zuko says that, I mean, not Zuko. Aang says, you know what the worst part is about being born 100 years ago? All my friends and family that I had, they're gone. I don't really know anybody in this time. And then he mentions that I had this friend named Kuzan. He was my best friend. We used to get in so much trouble. We used to get in and out of so much trouble together. And you know what? The, you know what? He was part of the fire nation. You think if you were born 100 years ago, we'll be friends too? And Zuko just looks at Aang for like maybe 15, not even 15, maybe like 5 to 10 seconds. It's like, it's just quiet, no music, no nothing. And Zuko just looking at him. And then he gets up and tries to hit Aang with a fireball. Aang dodges it. Then he runs back over to Katara and Sokka. <laughs> it was kind of funny because it was just like nothing. Just, they were just looking at each other for like 5, 10 seconds. Just... <sighs> he's just trying to fireball. <laughs> he jumps up and dodges it and he runs away. Aang just fine. Aang goes over to Katara and Sokka and gives them the frog. They suck on it. Aang lays down on Appa's tail. He tries to go to sleep. And Sokka says, Hey Aang, you make any friends? He says, No. No, I don't think so. And then they both spit out the frogs. Because obviously the frogs unthawed and they started to move around, so they spit them out. They're freaking out. And then we cut to Zuko. He finally gets back on the ship. And Uncle Iroh was like, Hey, hey, Prince Zuko, where have you been? It was music light night last night. We had a pretty good time. He says, I'm going to bed. Please, no disturbances. Zuko goes to his bed. He lays down. And he has like this huge Fire Nation symbol on his wall. He looks at that for a few seconds. And then he rolls over. Then he goes to bed. And then the last... That was the last scene of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was like... Oh, that was the last scene of the episode, wasn't it? The last scene was um, Saga spitting it out. But I mixed up those two scenes together. So, okay, let me show you everything that was cool during this fight. I mean, that, that whole fight was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I can't have that. that was pretty smooth. Okay, here we go. This is the first thing. This is when Aang ran in front of Zuko and did that big air beam in front of everybody. That was pretty cool. <laughs> it's like, there's so much I gotta show you. It's just so much. Cause there was so many cool scenes. This is when he did that big air beam. And he just made everybody disappear. Not disappear, but, you know, boom. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty cool. Like, Aang and Zuko are a pretty good tag team. And Zuko didn't even use any firebending. This is nice. Zuko didn't even use any firebending. This is when that dude tried to stab Aang, and he grabbed the, uh, the spear, and he, like, shot the air at him and moved it away. And that's when he broke it. And then he grabbed Zuko and starts to use it as a propeller. This is pretty cool. So, like, Zuko and Aang were a mean tag team, and... Uh, Zuko didn't even use any firebending. So, just imagine if he did. That would be nice. <laughs> I mean, that, that would be real nice. It's never going to be funny. This is when Aang used the ball staff as a propeller. It was using it, but obviously Zuko was pretty heavy, so he fell. <laughs> he fell a little bit. I don't know if you could actually... I don't... Like, look at this. It's pretty cool. They, they have the bamboo ladders, and they ran up the wall of them, and they bent and stretched like that. I don't know if that could actually happen. I don't know. But this is when Aang went, boom, like down on it. Whew, like he wasn't taking any hostages. Look at POV shot. What the? Boom. I know they back here. I know they do. <laughs> no hesitation. Just, Wah. and that was really about it besides the cool scene where he put both his blades on Aang's neck. But, I mean, that's whatever. I might, I might make that the thumbnail. But if I can't make that the thumbnail, here's what it looks like. Here's what it looks like. Uh... I kind of forget about um, Zuko. I mean, all the fire nation guards, they throw like this big flame blast at Aang. And he made an air dome to protect them both, which is pretty cool. And then the last little scene I'm going to show y'all is when Zuko is just sitting there looking at Aang. And then he jumped up and <laughs> tried to punch him. I was like, yo, chill. They were, <laughs> they were clearly looking at each other. Like he was like understanding for a second and nothing happened. I'm guessing if Aang didn't do this, Zuko probably would have used his firebending to block that because look at this. He had to use an air dome to protect them. But Aang like did it so fast. But I guess I mean nah, I guess if you use firebending, they'll know you're part of the fire nation. So I guess Zuko was prepared to like either tank it or do whatever. And also that scene with Zuko and Aang when they were just talking to each other, somebody did do a 3D animation of it that looks really nice with Aang like playing off a leaf. I don't know if I can find it, I'll link it in the comics. But that was a pretty good animation that they did with that. That was really nice. Look, they were looking at each other for like five, ten seconds. And he just jumps up and tries to hit him. For <laughs> no reason. He started like, they were just chilling. <sighs> he just tries to hit him. <laughs> he just tries to hit him. 
What else in the episode? That was a, this was a pretty good episode. I really like this episode. This was nice. And the next episode, I, I remember this episode. It was a pretty funny episode too. So, hey, I actually did a pretty good job for this time. This one, I actually did a pretty good, a decent job of reviewing this. Decent job. So, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I see you all later. I thank you all for watching. I thank you all there and be wonderful human beings. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, my head just turned off my TV so that big blue light is on me. <laughs>